so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another Victober video. Today I want to talk about a few underrated authors from the Victorian period. I feel like a lot of the time when people reach for Victorian literature, especially when they're starting out in Victorian literature, they tend to reach for the same few authors. Dickens, Hardy, the Bronte sisters, George Eliot, H.G. Wells, sometimes William Thackeray, Wilkie Collins, Elizabeth Gaskell, Robbie Louis Stevenson, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and while those ten authors who I have just mentioned are all brilliant, brilliant authors, and there are probably some other very famous Victorian authors who I've lost from the top of my head, there are a lot of other Victorian authors who are slightly less famous and who are a bit underrated, who I also think are really well worth a read and really, really brilliant. There are a lot of these, but I have nine in particular I just want to talk through today, who I really, really like and think deserve a little bit more attention. So I will go through in alphabetical order. The first person I want to talk about is R.D. Blackmore. I haven't spoken about R.D. Blackmore that much on this channel, because the only book I've read by him at Lorna Doon I read about 10 years ago. Clara Vaughan, another book by him, is on my TBR for Victober, but I haven't got to it yet and it's really quite long. I have a feeling I will not be getting to it this month, but I'm really hoping to get to it very soon. And I believe that Clara Vaughan contains one of the first female detectives, so I'm very interested in that. But his novel Lorna Doon, which I have read, is really, really wonderful. It's a historical novel and deals with family feuds and drama and action with forbidden love and a kind of Romeo and Juliet-esque sort of story. I I really really love Lorna Doon, I think it's absolutely beautiful, really really wonderfully written, really really exciting and dramatic. I haven't read it as I said for nearly 10 years but I adored it when I was 15 and I'm so looking forward to getting to some more R.D. Blackmore in the future and he's an author I would highly highly recommend. The next person I want to recommend is Amy Dillwyn, the author of The Rebecca Writer, which I read earlier this month. This is a brilliant book that I really enjoyed and would highly, highly recommend. She is a great writer and I'm really excited to hopefully pick up something else by her in the future. She is a Welsh Victorian writer and I love the way she writes about Wales and the society at the time, especially because I don't know very much about Wales in the 19th century, so it was really interesting in The Rebecca Writer to see the divisions between the lower classes who speak Welsh and the upper classes who speak English and everything that causes and also to deal with the kind of isolation in many of these communities within the Rebecca Writer. In fact actually the Rebecca Writer really reminded me of Lorna Doon, so if you have read Lorna Doon I would recommend this as well. There's something about the kind of wilderness and the kind of cruelty and harshness of some of the people in both this and in Lorna Doon that I think kind of connect these two books in my head a little bit. This was really engaging and really gripping and really politically and historically and socially interesting as well and one I would highly recommend. The next underrated Victorian author I would like to recommend is J. Sheridan Le Fanu. His most famous novel is probably Carmilla but even then considering I think it is a far superior vampire novel to Dracula it is often much overlooked in comparison to the much more famous Dracula, Bram Stoker. There's another well-known Victorian author I forgot to mention at the beginning. I'm also currently halfway through reading Uncle Silas by Joe Sheridan family which I'm really enjoying as well. I think he is a brilliant gothic writer and he very well captures mystery and gothic and the strange sense of repulsion and attraction you can feel towards certain individuals, how you can both dislike someone but also be in their power. Camilla, as I said, is a vampire novel and Uncle Silas is one of the first Locke Grimm's mystery. He is a brilliant writer about the gothic and the supernatural, about the ghostly and the confusing, but he has a great writing style and builds atmosphere wonderfully and is very, very interesting. I also think that the underlying homoeroticism in Carmilla in the relationship between Laura and Carmilla and quite how romanticised that relationship is, is something that's really really interesting and another reason why I would highly recommend the work of Jay Sheridan the Fanu. Next I want to mention the wonderful George Gissing, one of my absolute favourites. I have read three books by George Gissing now and absolutely loved all of them. He's one of those Victorian writers that I'm definitely definitely keen to read everything by and I think he is a wonderful wonderful author. Three books by him that I have read are The Netherworld, New Grub Street and The Odd Women. The Netherworld is a brilliant and miserable exploration of life for the London poor in the 1880s and is very reminiscent in style and tone of Hardy but set in the city and I often think of Gissing as a kind of urban Hardy. If you like Thomas Hardy I really 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 think you will like George Gissing. New Grub Street is a fascinating look at writers in the late 19th century and kind of the literary world and the weird class footing that writers and novelists and men of letters were on because you were a writer so you were educated but a lot of them really really had no money and a lot of them are really struggling to even find their next meal to be able to pay their rent but they all also are educated and admitted into high society and where do you draw the line? What is your social position when you're a writer in this time? It's a fascinating book. Not the happiest again, a bit like The Netherworld, but a really really brilliant read. And then The Odd Women, which I've just finished recently, is absolutely incredible. It is 
perhaps the most feminist Victorian novel I have ever read, which is one glorious thing in itself. The Old Women focuses in part on two women who own a typewriting school, and their aim is to provide an interesting and fulfilling life and career for unmarried, middle-class, educated women. And they talk about how ridiculous it is that educated women have been limited to being teachers and governesses, and how there is kind of nothing else for them. It's a really, really brilliant look at gender within the Victorian period, deconstructing all of Ruskin's ideas of separate spheres, and just doing like all the most amazing things. George Gissing is such a fascinating writer and I'm really looking forward to reading more of his in the future. The Unclassed will probably be the next one on my list I think and I'm really looking forward to that. He is such a brilliant compelling author with such real characters and such sort of grim but beautiful moments. He's one of those beautiful wonderful incredible writers who are being able to write a book that is so gut-wrenchingly awful at times in its misery but also has moments of such beauty and poignancy as it can lift your spirits and make you happy and excited like he is such an incredible author I cannot I cannot recommend him enough he is amazing and I would highly recommend George Gissing I think he is a much underrated novelist next I want to mention another much underrated novelist and that is Geraldine Dewsbury so underrated that she is mostly out of print which really really upsets me because her novel The Half Sisters is one of the best Victorian books I have read I'm hopefully gonna try and fit in her novel Zoe this month so but I'm not sure I'm gonna manage it. Regardless The Half Sisters is incredible. I know I have been speaking about this in like nearly every video this month because it is so good but it's about two sisters, two half sisters who have the same father but different mothers, one of whom ends up middle class and ends up pursuing a kind of angel in the house life being a domestic housewife and the other sister who has a kind of lower class background who ends up being an actress, something not considered very respectable in the Victorian period. It's about morality and gender and class and life and all of the good stuff. Like, it's so amazing. It's so brilliant. It, again, like George Gissing's The Odd Women, is a wonderfully feminist Victorian novel. And I also think that it's wonderful in terms of exploring class and respectability in the Victorian period. And it's an absolutely brilliant novel, one I would highly recommend. And also really easy to read and a great place to start with Victorian literature, so long as you can get your hands on it, because I know it is a bit tricky. The next author I want to mention is George Meredith. Not someone I have read masses by, but I loved his novel The Egoist, and I have enjoyed some of his poetry as well. I think he's a much underrated Victorian novelist and I only heard of The Egoist because I was googling bestsellers in the Victorian period about a year and a half ago and stumbled across this book, thought it sounded interesting, started reading it, found it at first incredibly difficult and then the more I read it found it increasingly fascinating and just astounding. Again, like The Odd Women, another very wonderfully feminist Victorian book which really picks apart gender roles and gender power play and power dynamics in the Victorian period. It follows a couple who have just got engaged and what happens when the woman Clara begins to think that maybe she doesn't want to marry this man Willoughby and the book follows her efforts to extract herself from that relationship and what that means and just how Willoughby's ego and the social position of women in the time affect the relationships between them. He is a brilliant brilliant writer, not the most accessible, not the easiest to read in terms of the language but fascinating and interesting and complex and wonderful and I cannot recommend The Egoist enough. I'm really looking forward to reading something else by him in the future though I know I need to put his books in a month where I have a bit more time and dedication because as I said he is not the most accessible Victorian writer. The next underrated Victorian writer I want to mention is George Moore. I just finished reading the first novel of his I've read which is Drama and Muslim which I really enjoyed. It was really really interesting. It's one of those books I need to like sit down and have a long hard think about before I really appreciate what it was trying to say and everything that it was getting at. It's set in the 1880s in Ireland and looks at the upper class social life in Dublin and in the countryside and it has a weird atmosphere and tone drama and Muslim because on the one hand the main kind of plot of the book follows a woman's efforts to get her two young daughters married and a lot of it reads in tone and plot like Jane Austen also there's a lot about the land league and Irish politics in the 1880s and every now and then a farmer tries to shoot someone through a window so it's got that weird mixture of political drama and Austen-esque love stories which works fantastically and is really really interesting. It's also really quite radical for a Victorian novel in so many fascinating ways. One of the main young female heroines is an atheist, one of the other main female heroines is in love with another woman, one of the other female heroines is having a lot of premarital sex and the mother of two of the main central female heroines seems to be carrying 
on a long affair or at least a very romanticized friendship with a man who lived next door and is not her husband. There are so many like shocking things in this book aside from the politics and it's such a fascinating book and one I would highly highly recommend. I'm really looking forward to reading his book Esther Waters in the future as well which I hear is really really interesting and deals with what happens after a young woman is seduced and her life from that point onwards. He's a really really interesting author, writes fantastically and really intriguingly about Ireland in the late Victorian period and has a lot of really interesting social critique of upper class society in Ireland at the time and I'm really looking forward to reading more by him in the future. I think he's a little bit of a forgotten author but one I would highly recommend. Next I want to mention the wonderful Margaret Oliphant. She's an author I've been really loving this year and I think is definitely definitely worth a read. I started with this bind up of two novellas from Persephone Classics, The Mystery of Mrs Blencaro and Queen Eleanor and Fair Rosamond. Queen Eleanor and Fair Rosamond is probably still my favourite thing that I have read by Margaret Oliphant but I have also been really enjoying her Carlingford Chronicles. I've read three of those so far, The Rector, The Doctor's Family and Salem Chapel, all of which I actually read in September so I'll link my September wrap up down below and I'm also by the time this video goes up will have hopefully read Miss Marjorie Banks slash Miss March Banks it's written Marjorie Banks, apparently it's pronounced Marge Banks, which Kate and I are currently hosting a read-along of. I really enjoy her writing style, it's very easy and simple and interesting to follow, and one of the things I quite like about her is that on the surface her plots are quite simple and her books are not very highbrow like an author like George Eliot, but actually there's a lot of subtle social criticism under the surface and there is a lot of interesting exploration of themes of gender and class and respectability and social expectations and morality and so many interesting things. I think she is such a fascinating author and I'm really looking forward to my journey with Margaret Oliphant in the future. She wrote in her lifetime more than a hundred books so while she's been a little bit forgotten there is definitely a lot to get your teeth into. She was widely popular during the Victorian period. She was actually a Queen Victoria's favourite novelist but she was considered a little bit trashy and has been forgotten I think very undeservedly since so I would highly recommend reading something by Margaret Oliphant. And then the final author I want to mention today who is probably the least underrated author on this book is Anthony Trollope. And I know Anthony Trollope is fairly well known, but I do think that in comparison to authors like Dickens and Hardy and George Eliot and the Brontes and Gaskell even, he does get a bit forgotten. His name and his books very very rarely crop up on university reading syllabuses, and although I've seen a lot of people on booktube talk about the Barsetshire Chronicles in the last few years, which is really really wonderful, I don't think that in general Anthony Trollope is that well known, and when I say to people outside of booktube that I'm reading an Anthony Trollope book they tend to look at me blankly and not know who he is, but I genuinely think he is one of the best writers of the Victorian period period and he is one of my absolute favourites. His Barsetshire Chronicles, of which I have one left to read, is just incredible. It's a series of interconnected novels set in the same county and dealing with some of the same characters with overlapping themes and those books in that series, the five I've read so far, are all so wonderful. The Small House at Allington is absolutely incredible and I think he is such a wonderful writer. I love the realism of his writing and how thoroughly real his characters feel and I love how even in his books which have sad or unhappy elements there is always something uplifting and something calming in his books. I feel like when I read an Anthony Trollope book I trust him so much and I think he is such a brilliant brilliant writer. Aside from the Barsetshire Chronicles, The Way We Live Now is one of the best Victorian novels ever written, a really fascinating epic Victorian novel, a bit Dickensian in its kind of form in that we follow so many different characters and find out so many different aspects of characters, all of whom are linked by interesting coincidences. I also really love his novel He Knew He Was Right, A Tale of Jealousy and Miscommunication in a Marriage, and I love his novel Rachel Ray which is a simple and nice love story. So he is such a brilliant brilliant author, I love the way he writes, I think he has such a wonderful power of creating realistic fantastic characters. I think he is one of the most talented authors of the Victorian period and I want to read everything by him even though he wrote like 47 books and I know I have a long way to go. He is an incredible author and although I know he is still in print and quite well regarded I just really don't think enough people read him. I don't think he is quite as well known and as well remembered as he deserves to be and I think he deserves his place alongside Dickens as one of the greatest authors of the Victorian period. So those are the nine authors I wanted to talk about today. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any other recommendations for underrated Victorian authors. Let me know if you have read anything by these authors or what you might like to read by them in the future. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another Victober video.